morning, everybody. I do want to introduce some of my key players and uh, some of our uh, people here at the St. Charles County Sheriff's Office. That way, if you have some questions down the road, you have them for your record. Uh, to my immediate right, your left is going to be Director Russ Martin. Uh, right behind me here is Director Scott Beaver. To my left is Director Skip Cole, uh, Director Perry Hageman, and Director Tara Wilds. Off to our far left, kind of off camera here again, is our investigative team, which is Captain Ryan Smith, and Lieutenant Jeremy Russell, of course, all the men and women that are actually working this case and are still working that case. Again, thank you for coming on short notice. We appreciate it. We feel like this information is important to get out. We're gonna kind of uh, regress a little bit and go backwards and kind of recap a few things from yesterday. Um, we are gonna take some questions at the end if we need to clarify a few things. I just wanna kind of just backtrack where this incident occurred, when it occurred, and where it occurred. Um, you remember yesterday at 10 hours or 10 o'clock in the morning, we received a call uh, at our 911 communication center from Kristen Daly's family reporting Kristen missing. Um, we immediately went to work at the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office along with the community, um, and we verified that the last time Kristen had been seen was last night or on Saturday night, early Sunday morning, just after midnight by her family members. Again, we went to a very extensive search, including our criminal investigation division, uh, and also putting out everything we could think of in our, to our media, uh, putting out pictures of, our, of Kristen, uh, putting out anything we can think of, and again, that community really stepped up and got involved with us here at the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office. At about, a set, about 6 p.m. last night, uh, one of our residents actually, based on the information we were putting out, was actually out looking around his area where he lives and actually discovered uh, what has now been verified as Kristen Bailey's body in a wooded area. Tristan. I'm sorry, I, I, I apologize. Thank you for correcting me. Tristan Bailey, I do apologize. Tristan Bailey's body that was actually um, um, located by a, a person in the neighborhood, a citizen in the neighborhood, and actually called 911, called the sheriff's office. We went out there and actually um, processed the body and recovered the body. Since then, we actually have arrested a suspect by the name of Aiden Fucci, F-U-C-C-I, 14-year-old. Um, uh, he's currently in custody for the Department of Juvenile Justice, charged with second-degree murder. Again, that second-degree murder case and charge came up with the corroboration of us, the Office of the State Attorney, and our investigative team. Um, I will tell you this, uh, this is a long process. We're in the very early stages of this. I think it's important that we actually put out that the suspect is in custody as we speak. There are no further threats um, to this particular case. And with that being said, again, this is a time for us to work with Tristan Bailey's family to make sure that um, they are, have all the information way before you have the information. That's how we do business here in the St. Johns County Sheriff's Office. So again, I I'll take questions here. Um, if you have any questions? Sheriff, there have been talk of possibly a second person involved. Is this definitively one suspect in this case, or was there any other witnesses or people around at this time? That's a great question, but there's lots of witnesses. Again, we're in the very early stages. We're less than 24 hours into this entire case, a little bit over that as far as when it was actually reported. So that being uh, said, our investigative team is out there interviewing all kinds of witnesses, uh, whether it's indirectly or directly involved in this case. But as I told you before, we have a suspect in custody. That is the only suspect um, that has to do with the death of Tristan. Any known relationship between the victim and the suspect? As you know, they're both attending the same school, or both attended the same school, um, which we'll talk about here in a minute, which is Patriot Oak School, which you know very well. Um, I'm not going to say they were classmates. We have not verified that. Again, trying to give respect to the school as they go through their grieving process as well. Does social media play a role? There's a Snapchat of Aiden. It's believed to be Aiden in the back of a squad car with a peace sign up saying, where's Tristan? Is that something that you guys are aware of? Sure, absolutely. I will tell you this, our real-time intelligence, real intelligence center really have captured all these videos as much as we can. We monitor it, and unfortunately with some of these things that are actually, maybe you think are detrimental to the case, actually help us in the case and actually don't actually hurt the case because we're collecting this media, uh, we're collecting this real-time. Again, and people have rights until they're charged with a crime. I think you all know that. We have heard she was in a cheer outfit. Can you say where and how she was found? Uh, again, this is the very early stages of this. Um, the family would get that information first. Uh, as I told you before, it was in a wooded area. Um, she was clothed, as my guess, the investigative team will tell you. Um, but as far as what she actually had on and stuff, uh, physically the investigator process with the medical examiner's office is going on as we speak. And we're gonna let them finish that process and make sure the family's informed of any findings first. Can you say how you found conversations between Aiden and her and the moments leading up to this? You know, how did they link up? There was talk from family that they saw her willingly leaving with with her with him and, and another boy sure again I, i'm going to just caution the all of our listeners out there today that just because it's on social media doesn't mean it's true our investigative team is collecting all those leads and processing those leads 
And again, once we get the entire package together and her family knows first, then we will share with you. Again, this was a day that we wanted to share with you that the suspect is under arrest. Um, he's currently in custody with the Department of Juvenile Justice. He is charged with second degree murder. We want to put our community at ease that we have that suspect in custody. Why second degree murder? I'm sorry. Why second degree murder? That's actually a decision that was made collectively, like I talked about before, uh, with the state attorney's office. And that's one of those cases, too. We can always increase the charge. But as we spoke of this, of this case last night, based on the facts we have, that's given time for our investigative team to continue to build a better and better case. Can we don't stop this your... process just because, I'm sorry, I cut off. We don't stop this process of this case just because the suspect was arrested. This is a long process we have to go through. There's multiple crime scenes involved here, as you know. And with that being said, again, we're gonna let our criminal investigations division do their due diligence and take their time and get this case right. Can you give us the cause of death? Can you give us the cause of death? At this time, uh, we're not giving the cause of death, but I will actually let Director Cole, if you want to add to that at all, let you add to it. No, there's nothing to add at this point. The medical examiner is still conducting their investigation, and once that's concluded, we'll share that with the family, and then we'll decide on whether to share it with the media. So, so as I told you before, too, I'm, I'm, I'll reiterate again, they're physically in the process. This is not an easy process, the, the medical examiner's office. We're going to let them, again, take their time, uh, be very thorough. Uh, dot their I's and cross the T's. Uh, it's important. We have a person charged, you know, with a, a serious crime, and we have a family that's grieving the loss of a loved one, a child, a 13 year old child. Isn't there any weapons found on, on any of them? Again, or asking about them? weapons and clothing and stuff, we're in the very early stages. We're just over 24 hours in the beginning of this investigation. And in order for us to do some accurate interviews with a lot of people that are still out there, again, we're trying to feed off social media too, as well, meaning that as we get tips, we actually follow up on the tip. But if we give all the information out there now, again, with respect to the family too as well, we're given the answers to some of the questions that might There has been yeah. hostility Thank and you. even threats made on social media. Can you say anything to calm the community who's not, who's very unhappy right okay. now? And there have been threats made, accusations made, things of that nature that you can maybe say justice is being done? Sure, absolutely. I'm glad you said that too as well. I mean, justice is being served. However, we know the, the, the community is angry. This is a very tight knit community of St. John's County. Um, and there's great families out there. So this, they've taken this personal. So again, all we can simply do is we ask them, I'm glad you said that too as well, is that let this case go through the process and go through the system. Let us do our jobs, let the medical examiners do their job, and let the state attorney's office prosecute this case. So I'm glad you brought that up, and please uh, allow us time to do this. Uh, and again, let's not accuse people uh, inaccurately. We have the suspect in custody, and we cannot bring Tristan back. So we, again, we don't want to uh, make this case in what it already is, it's bad enough as it is. So thank you. Is the suspect facing any other charges besides second degree murder? At this time, again, very early stages. Uh, again, early stages. again, very early stages. I'm, I'm gonna keep saying the same thing over again, I hate to, to, to say that to you, but again, we're in the very early stages. So at this time, he is charged with second degree murder. Uh, I mean, he is in custody, Department of Juvenile Justice. Can we add charges on? Sure, that's a collaborative effort we would do with the Office of State Attorney. Yes, ma'am. Victims of cheerleaders. Sure. If you still have a tip out there that can assist us in this case, we're not going to stop you at all. Matter of fact, our criminal investigation division will follow up on every single tip. Um, again, we're trying to not release too much information because we still have tips that have not been worked. Uh, this is in the first 24, 48 hours of this, this investigation. Uh, these men and women have been out all night long in the criminal investigation division trying to follow these leads up. And we are not done following the leads. Will he be charged as an adult? So at this time, that is a decision that we made by the Office of the State Attorney, along with us and the family meeting together. But we believe as of right now, he's being charged with second degree murder. And again, we'll work with the State Attorney's Office on seeing what they're actually going to do with the that charge. The victim is a cheerleader, we're told. Yeah, I'm sorry, one second, too. Just to follow up on that question, too. We want this process to be finished at the medical examiner's office across the street to add all of those uh, uh, findings together and then present it again to the State Attorney's, attorney's Office and or grand jury. Yes, ma'am, sorry. Um, the victim, we're told, is a cheerleader. Is the suspect um, an athlete in, at Peak Regal Academy? So at this time, we're not going to get into victimology. You know, what she's done in her past, we're trying to vary that, uh, you know, verify that, of course. So and this is something private. No, I know. I'm trying to cover back up, though, in the original part of that question. You know, we want to make sure we're accurate, too, with her information, too, because I'm going to be honest with you. Her information is more important than his. So I really don't care what he did um, in the school system whether it be sports or whether it be music, I'm more worried about Tristan and her family. So as we get into the actual, of the background of the suspect, we will actually, that will come out later on in the case. Mm -hmm. We're still working those leads. You say there were witnesses. Were any witnesses directly at the time of the crime or just people who saw them beforehand? I think it's fair enough to say now that we believe we have, of course, our victim accounted for, unfortunately, and we have our suspect accounted for. The witnesses, of course, are just a cumulative getting the case together indirectly or directly prior to. We but, believe we have everybody accounted for. But was anyone there at the time of the crime? 
we're in the very early stages of this. We have the suspect arrested, and we have, unfortunately, a 13-year-old girl that's no longer with us. How much did surveillance play a part in getting you guys to an arrest? Sure, I will tell you this, and I, I, I cannot thank our community enough. This is the, the, the relationship we have here in St. John's County with our community. The community helped us solve this case. When I say they went to work, they went to work, whether it be on social media. I mean, we saw moms and families yesterday walking in the wood line in clothes like church clothes yesterday. This is how passionate they were about solving this case or helping us solve this case. You all were out there last night. I saw you. Um, you saw families lining the roads. I mean, we had a, a, an influx of people trying to donate food and people coming from other parts of the county and the state, law enforcement agencies stepping up trying to help us out. Uh, this is a community that's very tight. I mean, as you all know, you know the circumstances are surrounding this, of where everything's kind of at. It's relative to each other. I mean, these kids went to the same school together. This is a very tight-knit community over there. And again, I can't thank our community enough. So between social media and I call it boots on ground, they went to work. And this case was solved because a gentleman saw the information put out there and went to work looking around his immediate area where he lives at. So we can't thank him enough and thank the community enough. We'll take one more question. Are you able to tell us a little bit more about location, the desolated area? Is it closer to Veterans Park? Is it closer to the neighborhood? Or how far deep in into the wooded area does this person have to go to find her? Sure, and I'm gonna leave that to Director Cole if you wanna answer any further than that. I mean, all I can say is that the, the, once we put the mass notification out, people started looking. The gentleman that uh, lived in the subdivision was out on his normal walk and jog and he was doing a little bit extra digging in a remote area around a pond and located. Near the neighborhood or near the, okay. Yes. Near his neighborhood. Yes. His and how did they know each other? His classmates and they all live across from the same neighborhood. Were there any Okay, so there? we appreciate everybody coming today. I'm gonna finish with this. And I hope I don't, this is not a personal attack on the media at all. I'm just gonna simply tell you this. Yesterday, I asked you nicely that we pay respect to the family as they agreed. And Tristan's family, uh, of course, listen, I understand your job and I respect it. Most of you know that, you've known me a long time. However, this morning, kindergarten, K through eight, Patriot Oaks Academy, that's five years old to about 14 year old kids, were bombarded by media entering a school this morning. Some of them couldn't even get in there because there's so much media coverage out front of that school. I understand it, I respect it, but I ask you nicely to give them the opportunity to grieve. You think that five-year-old child walking to school this morning knew what happened yesterday in Durban? Probably not. They do now because they're gonna go home and ask their parents what happened. Again, this, this school is grieving. This community is grieving. Tristan is not coming back. They loved her in school. And we have a person charged for murder. So I ask you again, I ask you nicely, I asked you yesterday the same thing, that you give respect to the family in the school up there. You got a principal who's dealing with a, with a large community of K through eight, parents and kids trying to grieve a murder. Not a missing child anymore, by the way. A murder of a 13-year-old girl, Tristan Bailey, who's not coming back. So I ask you again, please, give this school some respect so they can get the proper grieving in there for these kids and get them home safe and get them through this week and finish out this school year. Thank you for your time today. We appreciate you. As any other information comes up, you'll be notified immediately. As soon as we leave this press conference today, Parade Pass is gonna forward you uh, any information that was put out this morning, including the suspect's name, and uh, date and uh, age and where he's currently located. Any other updates will come from Parade Pass. Thank you for your day. Have a good day. Be safe.